All right, welcome back to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Today we're going to be talking about tweens, specifically classic tweens. So uh, what a tween is is a shorthand word for between, and it means you specify the beginning and the end of an animation, and the computer will fill in the stuff in between. So when you're looking at your timeline, a tween will look like a blue um, filled in keyframe with an arrow going from left to right. And uh, to make one of these, you have to, let me remove the tween right now, you have to click Create Classic Tween. So, there are a few requirements for making a tween. First of all, the object that you are moving needs to be a symbol. It cannot be a shape or something. It has to have a name and it has to be in the library. So the second uh, requirement is that it is one symbol and not two. See when I put in two it becomes all dotted like this because it is getting all confused trying to move two things and uh, see it's like freaking out. I'm just going to delete that and um, the other requirement is that the symbol is the same from beginning to end. If I change it to this green square I mean, it could work, but it, I don't know. It becomes a green square. It doesn't really gradually change. It just kind of moves to the same position. I mean, you can do it if you want. It doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. Anyway, uh, you can use classic tweens for all kinds of things. And I will show you. Uh, you can make a ball bounce very realistically. Do, 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 do and you can make a ball like zoom into the distance like that like crazy or you could make it stretch like crazy and then dissolve like that all this is achieved through classic tweens so uh, another example is using classic tweens to give an illusion of depth and uh, three-dimensionality. When you see these hills and mountains and grass, they look pretty flat, but when you press play, they look very 3D because they are moving at different speeds. I mean, in reality, they are completely flat, but we give the illusion that they are at different distances from each other. So I'm going to show you how to make these uh, three things. We're going to cover the bounce, the drop, and the zoom. Uh, let's see. So, so we want to make this ball uh, bounce. So how about we start with a clean slate. I'm going to hit Shift F5 to delete. Press F5 again to create an empty keyframe. Uh, we're going to drop this ball from a distance. And let's see, let's make it drop for 15 frames. I'm going to hit F6 to create a new keyframe. And then I'm going to uh, move it down by holding down Shift and then put, pressing down on the arrow key pad. So it goes directly down. And now all we have to do is right click and create classic tween. So now it goes down. But it doesn't look very realistic, does it? It looks kind of like it's floating. So there's a feature of uh, classic tweens called easing. If you see over here, there's this thing called easing. And uh, ease basically uh, slows down the beginning or the end to kind of make it seem like it starts out slow and then gets fast, or starts out fast and then gets slow. You can also make it start slow, go fast, and then end slow. But uh, right now we're going to make it start slow and then get fast. So to do that we need to set it to a negative ease value. I'm going to hit make it negative 100 percent and that will make it start slow and then get fast. See? Looks pretty good. Now we want it to bounce. So I'm going to hit F6 on another frame. Shift up a bunch of frames. Move it up and we want it to move we want it to bounce back down at the same location so I can actually just click and drag one of these frames right here and it'll be
right, just what we need. So now I'm going to select any frames within these keyframes and then create classic tween and it will just create classic tweens right there. So that also looks very unrealistic. So to do to mimic gravity, gravity like starts acting on it and then it starts to slow down. We want to make it slow down at the top. So we make an opposite ease, which is a positive 100, and that will make it slow down at the top. And then we want to make a negative ease to make it start slow and then get fast. So let's look at that. Whoa. That was like too slow. Okay, we're going to or too fast. So we're going to add more frames in here to make it look more realistic. Yeah, it looks better. I could even make it go higher. Yeah, it looks better. Okay, so now we want to make it bounce again. So I'm just going to hit F6. And I'm going to hit F6 again. So we have this frame. And then we just need to change this one. So it goes like this, this, this. And now I'm going to hit Create Classic Tween, and it'll just create those. And it goes like that. So we want to do the same thing we did before, which is ease um, positive first and negative second. You're always dragging towards the towards the direction on your tween that you want to make slower. Yeah, that looks good. Let's just give it another another one of those. F6 twice. Right click, create classic tween. And just for the heck of it, ease it. Doo -doo -doo. Wait. Doom, doom, doo -doo -doo. Oh, I didn't move it up, sorry. There we go, let's try that again. Doom, doom, doo -doo. All right, that is a bounce. So in this example, we showed how to, how to create eases in a tween. Let me show you a um, custom ease. So I want to make this ball start slow, go fast, and then get slow again. So I create a classic tween and then in the ease I, I look at this pencil and it says edit easing. So this is kinda looks tricky and complicated but once you get used to it it's pretty simple see the the acceleration or the speed it's going at is extremely constant if we want it to start slow we move this down here so it'll start slow and then we want it to slow down at the top so we move this one up like that so I'm going to drag these out a lot just to make it more extreme and then this should yeah see it looks very natural now if I do it the opposite like this it'll look kinda weird but I mean mm, it won't even let me do it all the way so I'll just like that and like that as much as I can Ooh, that looks weird but you can do a lot of things with uh, custom easing yep uh, so now we're going to do the zoom. So let's hide this layer, create a new layer, and okay, we want the ball to look like it's coming from the extreme foreground to the extreme background. So what we're actually doing is making making it huge and making it small. It's not actually moving in space. So I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard to bring up free transform I'm gonna make it huge like that and then I'm going to go to the end of my timeline and hit F6 and then I'm gonna make it extremely small in fact I have to zoom in to make it small enough and then I'm going to hit V so that I can move it around it's really small it's like too small so I'm going to move it around with the arrow keys and the shift. And now I'm going to create a classic tween. So, first thing that we notice is that it looks like 
it's starting out really slow and getting fast but it's actually moving at a consistent even speed but it looks like that because we're used to things moving really fast in the foreground and then really slow in the background so what we have to do is change the easing we want it to be extremely fast in the beginning and then get extremely slow so to do that we're going to move it up all the way as far as we can like that and then move it up all the way like that as far as we can it's very important that it looks like this okay let's see how that looks there that looks much better okay so I mean you could also do the reverse let's just do that why not um, make one that starts out really really small and then becomes gigantic oh my god I'll just make a new one classic tween so we yeah, the trading places so in this case we want to change the easing the opposite direction so it starts out extremely sh slow and then gets fast like that so yeah that looks pretty realistic alright so now we're going to um, change shape and opacity by making it look like a water drop going down okay so when you are uh, using free transform which you click Q to get there's this thing in the middle uh, which is the anchor point so like right now the anchor points in the middle so everything centers around the middle if I move it to this side then everything centers on that side and whatever you do even if I like move it off to the side like that it'll base itself on that point right there so right now we want it to be on the top so that it looks like it's kinda of dangling from that spot right there so I'm going to hit F6 uh, here and then I'm going to make it kind of droop like that okay and then um, I'm going to give it a classic tween and then make it ease out so it slows down as it goes like that and then I want it to start moving down and then get really narrow and this is going to be kind of fast so I'll put it here or here maybe and now I'm going to make it like that like that and I'm going to give it a classic tween and we want it to drop realistically so we're going to make it start slow and get fast with a negative ease yeah and so we want it to enter the ground so what I'm going to do actually since I want to um, change the anchor point from the top to the bottom so that it will um, shrink down centered on the bottom uh, important thing to remember is that you cannot change the anchor point in between keyframes if you don't want it to look really weird so if I were to change the anchor point and then make it shrink like that which is what I want to do and then give it a classic tween what's gonna happen do 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 oh well it looks pretty good but you can see that the bottom is it's starting to move a little bit off from where I want it to be I want it to be higher up but it's going a little bit too far down so that was a bad example but what I want to do to fix that is give it another frame and in that frame we change the anchor point so now see the bottom stays the same and so let's see now I want it to expand like a ripple effect so 
Hmm, let's see. I want to change the anchor point again. So whenever you're changing the anchor point, you just give it a new frame. And so I'm going to change it and put it here. And we want it to... Oh, this one has to have the same anchor point too. Um, we want to make it look like a ripple, like that. Okay, so create a class between. And it's going to look like that. So it looks very evenly spaced and gross, so I'm going to give it a positive ease so it looks like really nice, like that. See? Okay, so how do we change the opacity? How do we change how see-through it is? There is a property on the side panel, under properties. If you click on the item, you have to click on the item. If you're clicking on something else, then you won't see it. If you click on the item, there is a thing called color effect. And it says style, and you have a choice of none, brightness, tint, advanced, alpha. We want alpha. Alpha is another word for how see-through it is. So if we change the alpha of the last one to be completely transparent and the beginning one to be completely opaque, it is going to gradually become transparent. See? That is really good for making things like, I don't know, uh, punch effects, like, I don't know, stuff that gets dispersed and then becomes see-through, whatever. Yeah, so let's look at that. Boing. Looks alright. Kind of looks like it's a seed that kind of entered the ground and then exploded. Yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, so... That's kind of the basics of uh, classic tweening, all I can think about right now. Um, there's uh, many advanced ways to use classic tweens, and I will show you an example of that right here. I actually use uh, classic tweens to animate all my uh, characters in uh, animator versus animation. So you can see the aim dude, and each body part is actually on its own layer and um, each f each uh, pose I move each one of the layers into a new position and then give each layer a separate classic tween so if I play this animation it looks pretty fluid that's because I have in-betweens in between each every every three frames or so And of course, I have uh, some eases also to make it look more realistic. Yeah. Now, um, I also use it for Firefox. Now, Firefox is really tricky because his body parts actually change over time compared to the aim guy who is pretty consistent the whole time. But the Firefox guy his body like um, changes uh, its symbol see like this the name of this um, symbol is called icon firefox body straight and then it changes to firefox body not straight so I had to give it a separate frame as it switches to the new uh, symbol and the tail is actually um, if I open it up it's actually its own set of layers each one of these little parts is a separate symbol on a separate layer and it is inside an animation so I can get out of this by hitting this and um, so yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say about classic tweens. Um, I recommend practicing making these things that I made and uh, making them look really realistic. And stay tuned for more tutorials, and I will see you next time.